Hello, my name is Rogelio Martinez, and um, I'm going to do an ionic com compound synthesis mini lesson for uh, my 50 service, 50 hour service for Rutgers University. <clears throat> the objective of uh, this presentation, of this mini lesson, is that students will be able to synthesize ionic compounds from metals, metal cations, and, me and non-metal anions. Students will, will be able to write ionic formulas following nomenclature rules, and students will be able to use Lewis structures to determine the, the ionic formula structure. I've included a, um, a periodic table of elements, periodic table of elements, to illustrate the group one metals that we will be working with, donate one electron to the reaction Group two uh, uh, metals donate two valence electrons to the reaction. The non-metals are in this area that, that I've included. The group four, 14 will accept four electrons. Group 15, which is nitrogen, will, will accept three. Oxygen, two, fluorine, one. So let's move on to our um, Exercise. This, this worksheet is normally provided to ESL students. 80 to 90% of my instruction in chemistry is done in Spanish. A lot of the work that I've asked them to do is written in Spanish so that they can understand and be able to proceed with the with the lesson. What it's what the instructions indicate here is it says complete the um, the table, writing the formula down for each ionic mixture, right? For each pair. It says remember to always put the cation first, determine the, the, the subscript before you think that the compound is neutral. Right, so we're looking at in a, the, the purpose of an ionic reaction. It makes a salt. It forms. It takes a metal and a non-metal to provide you a charge form of the product. For example, I'm going to give you an example of what that means. You can take sodium metal, which is positive, plus chlorine minus. If you mix them together, you will form sodium chloride. This is also known as table salt. Correct? So let's start working on this table. I want to emphasize that these are your anions. And these are your cations. The charge above each metal or compound indicates the number of electrons that that particular, either like an ammonia, ammonium, or the metal is going to donate to the anion. <clears throat> the charge <clears throat> on each one of these anions <clears throat> indicates <clears throat> how many pairs it will form with the corresponding um, cation. So they did the first one for us. They took a positive potassium <clears throat> has one electron to donate. Chlorine has one electron to accept, and it forms a neutral compound. When it mixes, when a metal and a non-metal mix in a one-to-one -one ratio, the subscripts are not written down as a convention. Let's say, for example, we're gonna do it on columns so that we can follow the trend. So the rule says that for this example, 
We're going to start with writing the cation first, which is the potassium, followed by the anion. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to look at the charge of the metal cation and determine how many hydroxyl anions are needed. <clears throat> okay, so hydroxyl is an important is a very funny compound. The hydroxyl group is a covalent molecule. In this case, it's being used as a covalent molecule to react with potassium to make anionic complex. So what part of the molecule is, should form the potassium salt? Should it be the hydrogen or should it be the oxygen? Because oxygen is a more electronegative of both, it bears the negative charge. So the potassium is going to form at that end in a one-to-one -one mixture to provide a neutral compound. So that is correct as it is. Oops. didn't go away. Raise your face. All right, let's try combining the potassium with the carbonate. The carbonate is an interesting compound because the carbonate looks like this. And you ask yourself, how many potassium ions or cations will you need to make a neutral compound? Well, you can see that here's a negative charge. You put one potassium there, one potassium here, so you're going to need two potassiums for every carbonate. Now, let's try and see what happens when you use a phosphate group. The phosphate group looks something like this. And it will form a cation at each negative charge. So it's going to take three potassiums to neutralize this phosphate free group to form a neutral compound. I hope you can begin to see a pattern of how these things work. Let's see, I'm going to leave you with this column for classwork so we can practice. Let's try looking at a cation with a plus two charge. This means that it has plus two pluses. It has two valence elect two electrons that it's going to donate to the reaction to provide a neutral complex. And let's see what happens as we mix them with the chlorine hydroxyl carbonate and the phosphate. Now, the rule says first draw the magnesium then we will write our ion our anion and then we need to figure out 
how many chlorines are, are going to be required in this mixture to provide a neutral compound. So chlorine has a negative charge of one. What the? Okay, negative charge of one. Magnesium donates two. So you're gonna need two chlorines to form a neutral complex. Let's try forming magnesium with the carbonate. Notice that magnesium has two, it will, it's, notice that magnesium will donate two electrons to the reaction mixture. And the carbonate also has a minus two. That means that if you take one carbonate, one mole of carbonate with one mole of the magnesium, it's, it's going to form a one-to-one -one ratio to form the ionic compound. And so it is written as this. There's a mistake. Like that. So what happens when you try to do the reaction? <laughs> <coughs> with the phosphate. It gets interesting now because we have a minus three. Here we have a plus two. What will be the coefficients for this reaction? A very useful method is to make a table like this one and say, for example, how many ions will magnesium provide? Two. How many ions will the phosphate provide? Three. Now it's, you just do a crisscross so it's gonna be magnesium three, phosphate two. Every time you find yourself with a reaction, ionic reaction mixture that you're not gonna have a one is to one complex, you must use this method to arrive at the adequate, uh, correct ionic formula. Eraser, please. Now let's look at the iron. This is iron. Iron, the symbol for iron is Fe. Iron exists as a plus two or a plus three. That's how you're gonna see it in your textbooks. That's how you're gonna see it in biology. And that's how you're gonna see it in your exams. Seldom like that, but for this case, iron is gonna donate plus three electrons <coughs> to the reaction. So, Let's do the first one. Iron is a cation. Chlorine is the anion. To complete the process, we ask how many chlorines are going to be required to neutralize or take up three positive charges, three valence electrons from iron, right? So it'll be iron one, chlorine three. That is pretty straightforward. 
I'm gonna let you try this one. I'm gonna explore a different one. What happens when iron reacts with bicarbonate? Notice that in this case, the iron has a plus three and the carbonate has a minus two. And that is, cannot be a one-to-one -one molar ratio to form a complex, right? So we ask ourselves again, we have iron. What is the charge on iron? How many valence electrons will be donated? Three. What is the anion? The anion is a carbonate. How many, how many valence electrons will the carbonate accept? Minus two, right? To arrive at the correct uh, formula structure, we just do crisscross. So it'll be iron two, carbonate three. I'm gonna leave these empty boxes for you to try as a as class exercise so that we can see. Um, we can try to explore how you can do these reactions. How do you, how do you write a formula? Um, and then I'm gonna be walking around each one of these stations. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stations. Stopping by to see how you're doing to monitor your progress, answer any questions you may have. And then we can, we can wrap up the exercise. Don't forget to put your name, the date, the period, and the class on the top of your sheet before you turn it in. This concludes my presentations on ionic compounds.